Okay. What I want to try and do is to completely end my turn, I want to try and just mage hand throw it straight up in the air. Hopefully the wind can catch it. Whether whether that knocks over the knoll, that'll buy them time. It'll do something, I hope. With whatever hold you have, you just want to pull it straight vertically up. Yes. Okay. Just go ahead and roll a little strength check for me. No, uh, no, no will, just a strength check. Uh, twelve. Let's see, that will actually work. You manage to effortlessly pluck this little blue rock off straight up. Did you mean to toss it or just pull it off? Just chuck it. Alright, this blue rock goes flying up into the branches up above. Kind of disappears. As if you underestimated the weight of this little rock. Probably. The knoll instantly collapses. Okay. You are now met in your peripheral of this dragonborn attempting to take on this colossal of a druid sentinel. Trying to hack at its calves with a 15. Like, you know, hacking at a tree. Mm hmm. Dwarf, now still holding this ancient gun. Seems unsure what to do. And will now personally address you. Okay, better be quick. Who are you? What do you want? Okay, name kind of busy. Understood. Name, Scathe. What I want, there is a red orb somewhere in, the, in this area I need to grab a hold of. Uh, that, that's what I need. That's what I'm trying to do. Uh, occupation. Currently, I'm stuck in a time loop. Really complicated. Can't explain. We're friends in a different timeline. That's why I know what about, about, about the gun. Right. Who did uh, the, the what now? That's what I thought. Stuck in a time loop. Need that red, the red orb that's somewhere on the altar. She kind of shrugs and says, okay, good luck, and runs over to the other sentinel. The dwarves. Tiefling will actually make it out of the wall. Attempt to dust herself off. Realize the knoll has been taken care of. And do her best to run over like she's assumably going to drop kick attempt to drop kick one of these sentinels. Right. Go ahead, Skate. Uh I'm going to Okay, is the did she drop the gun again? Or does she have the gun? Ivory still has the gun. Ivory still has the gun. Um I want to book it to write I would like to be here, if that's possible. Okay. You can um, catch up with everybody. Yeah. And ask if she can throw me the gun. You catch up with her. And she kind of looks at it and realizes that it's practically junk now, as if your words held true, and kind of just... She will toss it at you. She will toss it at you. Okay. Roll to catch. Fourteen. You, you almost want to fumble with this thing, but she just almost chucks this thing at you, but you manage to catch it in time. He it is almost, strength. It, it practically clatters in your hands. It feels like right. it's going to 
fall apart at any moment kind of deal. I just want to stow it so no one tries to use it again. In a bag. Um, In a bag? Yes, I still have a small bag, just, it's... You have your pockets, and you still have, you do notice you have your bag of holding. Everything on you is exactly the way it was when you originally, quote, quote, went back in time. Yes. You have not actually tried to pull anything out other than your sword. Mm. Would you like to stow this gun? Yes. In your bag? Yes. Okay. Let's see here. Go ahead. Oh, take a measly four damage. Okay. Your arm is now stuck in your bag. What? You look down, your bag it is teeth and is gnawing on your arm. My bag is a mimic? Your, your bag is a mimic. Why is my bag a mimic? Why is my bag a mimic? Zanza will pull a nine. <laughs> Zanza will pull a meager nine and practically be doing bugger all against this druid sentinel. But it has noticed him. And will very heftily turn around and presumably get ready to do something. And since That's it is what? his turn, this giant druid will attempt to make a dragonborn pancake. I'm just sitting here rocking back and forth. Box one, treasure. Box two, treasure. Box three, teeth. Box four, treasure. What was that last one? Um, treasure? With a meager 12, it doesn't work as this dragonborn manages to jump out of the way of a giant foot. The dwarf will attempt to actually aim a little bit higher and do its best to jump and kind of strike the back of this creature, disrupting the flames as the dragonborn has just done. And with a crit manages to somehow jump up and strike this pickmall in the center back of this sentinel. This druid is now hanging off the back of the sentinel by its weapon. Dwarf, you mean? Yes. Okay. The tiefling will, first off, roll a 17 and do this very amazing, awesome spinning drop kick. And, well, kind of just hit the sentinel center mass and just kind of fall on her ass as she did before. She really didn't do any damage, but a hell of an effort. Skate, your arm's starting to hurt. Yes, it is. Go for it. I will my... I, I flail my arm wildly around. <laughs> it, it, like... C cartoon is trying to shake this thing off my arm. Do you make noise? Yes. <laughs> Practically everything stops. Even the giant sentinel stops his fire. Even the floating wizard turns around and notices some unaccounted for person flailing a bag and screaming. <laughs> awkward moment. Um. The rest of them will go back to flailing as the wizard now charges up lightning and is now looking at you. Okay. Um. Um. I'm freezing in a moment of panic. Using the bag on my arm as a shield, I wish to charge up at the wizard. The wizard is floating, but you believe if you jumped up just right, you could snag him. No, I, I want to try and charge past him. Oh, okay. 
You can just run. I want to book it. You can run. Where will the D great and merciful DM allow me to go to? Where would the great and naive player like to go? I want to get up onto the altar. You can do so. Uh, take another four damage as this thing's gnawing on your arm still. Om um, nom 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 flesh. We'll give you a minor action. Um. You are now up on this altar. There are four gigantic eggs that are, are glowing very hot as they were previously on fire. You now notice that the entire altar is warm to your feet as this entire thing was, in fact, on fire a few seconds ago. Right. And there's uh, a nice little an... blood orb sitting in the middle of the altar. Well, before I do anything with that blood orb, I have an idea. I wish to just cast an ice spell. I don't care what happens now. I'm too. I'm really close to the wizard. I'm really close to Mazus because I know that I know that's Mazus. Okay. Uh, I just want to cast an ice spell, like at the eggs or something, and see what happens. Contest of will. Even. All right. Effectiveness. Nine. Damage. One. All right. You do manage to stay in focus. What would you like to do? You can actually aim this as you are in control. I just want... I would like... Uh, what do you want to aim at? Let me put it like that. I want to aim at... An egg. Which egg? Uh, let's go for this... This one. Alright, you focus all of your will that you could muster to freeze this egg. It immediately cools down before your ray of frost even touches it, and you have now successfully trapped this entire gigantic egg in a nice sheath of ice. Probably a few inches thick. Yay. Right. Well, the Dragonborn will run back up and try to attack this druid again. With a 19, manages to plunge his swords into its chest and is now in a similar situation that the dwarf is in. I cannot grab the Dragonborn. Now, the wizard, seeing what you are doing, does not seem to be happy. I would presume not. And rolls only a 10. It's an arc of lightning goes around you and plays off of the altar. It couldn't have at least hit the mimic on my arm? Oh. At which point, four large crystals on surrounding pillars, you now notice, begin to glow and immediately strike the pillar. First off, Scathe, take four more damage. This thing is still chewing on you. As far as you know, you are still technically holding on to the gun inside the bag as well. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. There's actually a plan for that. Okay. For the time being, you are temporarily stunned as this bolt of electricity kind of shoots through you Yes. as these little crystals kind of strike the altar. Well, the dwarf is going to do her best to kind of pry her weapon out of this druid and, it, and inevitably try and steer this thing. With a crit, happens to do so. She manages to kind of jump on this thing's back and use this giant 
maul it betwixt its shoulder blades like a joystick <laughs> and practically drive this thing towards the wizard. Okay. Tiefling will try its best once more to drop kick. And with a 12, does the same thing as before. Her effectiveness has worn off against this large creature. Scathe, four more damage. Right. Uh, I have a new idea, which is what I was going to wait for, why I needed the gun. I would like to... Everyone seems to have decent cover, so I'm going to clamber up, like, right on top here, like, between everything. Right before the blood orb. And I wish to aim the blunderbuss towards the wizard with mimicking it with the bag mimicking everything I wish to try and fire everyone seems to be covered behind it a giant creature so they should in theory be safe-ish okay I'm not even gonna roll a contest of will roll effectiveness 19. Oh, that was close. It almost landed on one. That would have been bad, needless to say. Yes, yes, that would have been bad. Roll damage. Four. Okay. Instantaneously, you kind of... Can I take that back? Now would be the perfect time for a witty one-liner, if you had one. But you normally can't think of these things until after the fact, which is the hard part. Yes, I know. I always come up with them. You were too focused. You could not think of one. You point-blank aim this gun inside your bag mimic. As your, as, as your theory stood, you can feel the gun practically explode. You will... Take two damage, as you are pretty sure shrapnel or something strikes your hand. Your hand is not in a good spot right now. Yes, I probably now have metal in my hand somewhere. But the bag practically rips open, and a barrage of shrapnel goes flying in the wizard's direction. Roll a d20 for me. Ten. This wizard is a living pincushion and drops to the ground with a mighty thud. Time to gum up the gearworks. You realize that no one heard you. Yeah, I figured as much. And also no one realizes that he's a machine yet either, so... At which point, you now hear his giant rumbling as you turn around to see this giant forest god with blue rock atop its head. Begin to advance towards the altar. I forgot about him again. But I didn't kill him this time. I will still let you go, as that was pretty good. Now would be a good time to grab the rock and bolt. Or grab the, uh... Stone and bolt. Okay. Or the blood orb. Before I leave... I, I, I just yell at everyone, Aim for the rock! It'll stop him! Did anyone hear that? You are not sure. The only way to be sure if anything is heard is to wait and see, or attempt to physically, or, you know, make sure that whatever you do is known or heard. Well, then I, 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 I kneel down and bide my turn, because I'm still afraid to do anything else. Okay. Not to mention, I just used my attack anyway, so... The Dragonborn will try and do the same thing and attempt to steer this druid. The meager nine kind of just flails a little bit. Well... 
the wizard is writhing in pain on the ground. These two druids seem to kind of go blank, like they've lost their initiative. Will actually bide their turn. You can see this forest god is charging up something, but it is not, in fact, aiming at you. It's kind of blandly looking off into space, but it is practically charging hyperbeam. Uh oh. Ivory will do her best to take advantage of such situation. And with an 18, persuade this druid sentinel to smash the wizard. And with a damage check of, we'll practically embed this wizard with the pin cushions. The, the, the pins have now become flush with its body. He is now one with death. He has become death. He, he, he is full of the needles. He is not dead, but he is full of the needles. He appears to be dented in quite a few bits now. How's this for sharp wit? With a meager eight... Tiefling's not having good luck, and practically just kind of runs up and flails against this druid. Not it's even like, why won't my kick work on you? Pounce on his chest. Skate it is your go. Okay. Um. I screamed to everyone, move out of the way! Because this, this, I'm, I'm afraid this guy I won't be able to aim at anything. And uh, I think I'm just gonna pick up the orb and bolt. Now would be a good idea. Okay. You effortlessly do so. Okay. Another blinding flash of light later, and you were actually back in the council. What? Wait, really? Yes. You are in the middle of the council. Uh, 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 oh. You whirl what? around to meet the sight of a very important looking figure. The best way I could sum it up in one in, in the simplest phrase is it would be Manfred von Karma. Oh no. This figure is holding a clipboard hiding behind a large pair of like half moon glasses. Not even looking at you. Pointing at you. You! You're late! I... I'm... Sorry? What's... I'm lost. I don't know what's going on. Dodge! Roll reflex. Oh boy. Um... Thirteen. Alright. Now how I'm gonna work this, as long as your reflex is above your armor class, you're good. Or equal to. Oh, it's a good thing I have a really crap armor class. Oh, I'm sorry, language. How does that work? I forget your armor class. It's 13. Okay. You managed to barely move out of the way. You're not even sure how or why. As practically a purple spear goes flying behind you. Let's go. What? Dodge. Roll reflex again. Huh? Six. No, you were actually hit. Two damage. Uh. 
you now kind of can take in your surroundings. You are, in fact, in the middle of the council. There are at least five guards surrounding you, wielding some form of magic. Beyond that, you can see, other than the figure holding the clipboard, there does appear to be other people about the council, kind of watching. Okay. Um. Well, now that my... I, I'm going... Now that I am aware of what's going on, Ish, I, I'm going to pay attention for the... for his command to dodge. I hope. Timing is inevitable. Dodge! Again. Uh, six. Now that you are there, you can actually roll perception to kind of countermatch this, or, or I will give you advantage if you would like. Yes, please. Either or. Uh, advantage. Eighteen. Alright. Excuse me. Managed to dodge another one of these purple spears. You see, pretty much see these guards are just meticulating these magical spears and just kind of more like javelins and just chucking them at you. Gotcha. The figure with the clipboard will shout again Strike! Okay, um. What am I striking? I guess just I attack back at magic, so um at this figure range. has yet to even look at you, it's looking at its clipboard. I I just blast an ice bolt or try. Okay, where what? Um at one of the guards I guess I'm ha I have to do. Uh let's try this guy I'm facing. Okay. Seven. Not enough to hit armor class. It kind of just bounces off the armor, but your aim was good. Okay. Dodge! Yep, roll. Roll! Yeah, nine. No, two damage. Okay. Dodge! Roll! Eight, another... Yeah. Two damage. Strike! Okay, uh, magic again at uh, this guy. Eight. Once again, just to flex off of his armor. Counter! Counter? Okay, I guess that's both. Um, what's coming at me? Do I notice what's coming at me? Same. You have the... From your peripheral, something's throwing a spear at you. Okay. Uh, so I have to try and dodge and fire a bolt wherever the... Tar wherever it's coming from. Okay. So, dodge first, seven, no. And then... Since in fact you were hit, you could easily tell who where it came from. It was this guy here. Excellent. Aim ice bolt and fire. It's a three. No, you kind of fizzle up when it gets about halfway to towards your target. I also need to take two more damage. Can they tell that I'm damp that I'm already da previously damaged? You are unsure. Okay. Dodge. Okay, that one worked. Successful. Dodge. Not so. Two damage. You are getting increasingly faster with these commands. And the on watchers at this point are seem enthralled with your little performance here. You're you're getting some cheers and some woots, regardless of how bad you think you are doing. Apparently, my ability to adapt swiftly is this, is assisting me in there. Counter. Counter. Okay, who's got dodge first? Sixteen. All right, you dodged. It's coming from this guy. All right, turn and blast. Ten. 
arcs off of his armor, but did in fact hit strike. Okay. Uh, aim for this guy over here and blast. Thirteen. You actually hit this guy. Not lethally, but you in fact knock him a, f you know, a step or two back with an ice blast. But these right. guards, you now notice, are well armored, and they do appear to be the normal steel water guards. Right. Enough! No move! Strike! No, new move, strike. Okay, um... There's no plants around here. So... Force push? I'm gonna try force pushing this guy? Fourteen? Alright. Not too far, but just enough to actually make contact. Dodge! Six. No, two damage. Guards, advance! All the guards will take about five steps forward. Actually, circle you a little bit better. Okay. Dodge! I want to dodge, try and dodge towards this guy this time. Okay. With a nat one. With a nat one, you are struck for five more damage. So they are closer. Oh look, I've been impaled. This appears to be somewhat weak magic, you also notice, since you completely, utterly just failed to dodge and you were somewhat impaled. And, I'm not dead. and you're not, in fact, dead. Strike! Okay, um. I guess force push. Actually, I want to pull force pull this guy towards me. Okay. With a three. All right, your wind kind of just plays off of the guard. It doesn't push or pull the guard. Okay. Once again, the guards are called to advance. They are within swinging distance at this point. Excellent. Dodge. Ten. No. Just not, just not enough. Counter. Okay. Um. Dodge first. With a ten, no. Mm -hmm. And this time, uh, can I tell where it's coming from? You believe it's this guy trying to get retribution for you pushing him backwards. Okay. Well, he's 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 the one that struck you with the magic spear. Yeah. Well, then I would like to draw my sword on him. Do I still have it? You do, in fact. Then I would like to slash at him this time. Okay. With a five. All right. It glances off his armor. A whistle is blown. A very shrill whistle. If you were a dog, it would have been the effectiveness of a dog whistle. Very unpleasant. Right. The guards immediately back down. And go back to the original positions. I am very worse for wear. This figure with the clipboard was obviously the one blowing the whistle. Yep. It shouts for everything to stop. Still has not even looked at you. It is eagerly scratching in this clipboard. Slow, but we'll get used to it. Not bad. Minus five demerits for attempting to use weapon indoors. Oh. He seems to be finishing up writing. You are no longer in initiative. You can do as you please. I just collapsed to the floor as my health is really low. This figure will hold a hand up and 
lazily wave about, the guards dismiss themselves. This clipboard figure will get closer, but has yet to even make eye contact with you. And is still eagerly scribbling in this notepad. I am confused that I have not had to do a contest of will. Can I, I just... I am intimidated by this individual, so I'm just gonna... Like, rub my shoulder in, in small places, trying to... Stop the pain. You must learn to pick yourself up. Don't be a baby. I stand. For the first time, this figure actually looks up from its clipboard and actually looks you in the face. You cannot easily see this figure's eyes as it's well hidden behind a pair of, like, old-fashioned librarian reading glasses. Mm -hmm. This figure is, in fact, a gnome and appears to be middle-aged or a little bit older. Mm -hmm. gray, the gray hair and gray stubble not helping the youngish otherwise appearance. In fact, shorter than you, as gnomes typically are. Yes. And appears to be in very fancified clothing. And seems to be now looking you over for the first time. Ma seeming to be making of you. I'm... I state, uh... I'm very sorry if this is out of turn, which I'm sure it is. But I don't know what's going on right now. With a look of utter bewilderment and concern. He scribbles another thing or two inside that little clipboard. And pockets the quill. Then I suggest you get yourself in line. You have come here for this job. No, then you will need to have expected what is expected of you. You are slow to the draw. You are reckless, apparently. And you show up to your training late. It does not bode a good first impression for you, Ske. I'm bewildered again that he knows who I am. But I, I just... I, I keep my mouth shut and... Yes, sir. Hmm. I'm just trying to collect myself as best I can. You can... You're not even sure how, but I... But now you can practically tell he sees you are more worse for wear than what you think you should be. Kind of gives a... Kind of a sneer look over over you. Does he hey. notice that my arm is bitten? He does, in fact, notice you have like a bag latched, a bag opening around, latched around your arm. Maybe it appears you have woken up on the wrong side of the bed this morning. It's been quite the eventful day, to say the least. Ah. Well, that will be all for now. I will attend to a few things and I will be with you momentarily. The figure practically scoffs with body language and turns about and walks away from you. Okay. As you kind of gather yourself, all the onlookers have gone back to what they were doing. The council is just as busy as usual. You can make out, you do in fact see, you know, your three friends, Relic, Vivian, and Sabrak about. Sabrak? You do in, fe you do in fact see Sabrak talking to Vivian over at a couple of desks. <sighs> oh. 
Okay, well, they're conversing, so I guess I'm... I'll... I want to go over to Relic, I suppose. Is he busy? He seems to be chatting with somebody. Oh, so they're all busy? Okay. Um, it's not out of turn. Most everybody you, you have talked to previously at the council, whether for work or otherwise, has been essentially busy, but no one has bewildered you for... You know, no, no one has berated you for interrupting their work, and if so, they would let you know they are busy at the moment. Okay. Then I will... You know what? I can ask him later. I, I need answers. I'm going to go over to Sabrak. As slowly as I can, so, not, so to not seem to rush him. Kind of to make, kind of catching you approaching. Uh, I limp over. Sabrick kind of turns to kind of meet you halfway kind of deal. Oh, hey, there's the guy. Hey, how's it going? He says in his lax state as per usual. Very different from the last encounter you had with him, but... Yes. It seems to be his usual self. I just say, well, I, I've I've most certainly been better. I can see, he says, looking around your arm. I start picking teeth out of my arm. Oh, yes. Uh, Vivian, this is the guy I was talking about. He's come to join the guild. You now notice this sorceress... Standing next to him, you know to be Vivian, has quite the scar leading through her face and neck. That was not previously there. I'm, I'm just going to play along and, and say it's nice to meet you, as best I can to her. She formally introduces herself as Vivian Amber Bro. She is here with the Adventurers Guild and one of the top leaders here at the Steelwater Council, and she is most delighted to have you interested in joining the Adventures Guild. Well, it's good to know that her enthusiasm was not botched by the accident. I, I don't say that out loud. I'm just the musings of the care of Skate's inner mind. Sabrick says, "Well, if you can hold your own out there as well as you, I." guess held your own right there, you should fit in pretty well. Well, it's... It, it'll be tough, but I'll do my best. And better if I can. All right, glad to hear it. So, uh, I guess before we get started, uh, can I... I guess you've got some questions. I think... I suppose. Yes, I've got a, a few. Fire away? To be perfectly honest, I don't know how I got into the building at all. I've had a very bad day, as you can tell, and... Let's just say I don't know up from down right now. Okay, maybe you're going to have to work a little bit better at training next time. Okay, I'll play along. I met up with you outside. You had an appointment to see me. We were going to discuss your training and possible admittance to the guild. Okay. We opened a magic door, you freaked out a bit, mm -hmm. you came in here, Sinovel started training with you, here you are, talking to me. Okay then, um, quick question, was I this bloodied up with a bag on my arm when I talked to you? No, that's a new one, he says. Not seeming overly surprised. 
But uh, I figured that was, I don't know, something you tried to pull. No. I don't know elf magic, I'm sorry. That's okay, but no. I, I just, at this point, I just give up. Put my hand to my face and just give up. So he is not the same Savrak. Nothing is the same. Everything is different, and no one has any idea what just happened. I am. I mean, are are you okay, Skaith? I mean, you you look like you just went through a lot there. I wouldn't imagine training be that bad for you. You seem confident. It's a very long story, but first I need to see a medic. Oh, oh okay. I, I, I guess. Vivian instantly casts some sort of healing spell on you. You are instantly back to full health. There are no Yay. more teeth in your arm. You are back to full prime health. Yay. As you are mended, you realize you do have, in fact, your chainmail cloak, your bag of holding, the strap is all that exists now, still around your shoulder, and your dow sword, everything appears to be in order, except your bag is now gone, except for the strap. Oh boy. Uh, this is going to be a long story, I say to Savrak and Vivian, and I beg you to please bear with me, and then I, I would like to unfold everything that has happened to me. Before, to you, before you begin really saying anything, Savrak kind of has, oh, a look of remembrance on his face and he holds up a finger and says, Can I can I have a moment real quick with and he kind of points over to Vivian. Sure. I, I just He I, he kind of pulls an arm around Vivian to kind of turn her away for a minute and begins speaking, kind of whispering to her. Something in your pocket resonates. I pull it out. As you do so, you also realize you are no longer in third person. You feel back to normal. Really? Okay. You do, in fact, you from your pocket, you pull out a black piece of paper. Unfold. Little words appear to glow on it. It is the same note that you have previously been given by Sabrak. Words on the paper glow. Shh. We'll talk later. Then I... I just fold it up and kind of clap my fingers to the open palm of my other hand. It's just, got it. Drum as my fingers together. Practically, as soon as you put it back in your pocket, the two whirl around and Sabrek seems done with whatever he was whispering about. Okay, so, uh, right. I'm sure you've got a few more questions here. Uh, you're still trying to join the Adventurers Guild, right, Scaith? Absolutely. That's that is why I'm here. All right. Sounds good. Um, I still I seem mentally exhausted. It just. I'm sure you've got a few more questions for me, and I'll be more than willing to answer them when we go on your admittance exam. You obviously see that his phrasing is off. Fair enough. Besides, I really could use a rest anyway. And, uh, well, we're 
how this works is we've well we've got an assignment that will have you partake in and I will watch over and observe your well progress and methods and at the end of such little excursion you know you will be scored and if we feel you would be prime material then basically you've got the job um, I, I see you've already met our uh, well uh, potentially your new boss here uh, Heinrich he kind of holds a hand up to notice behind you to which you feel you just feel someone behind you I just casually turn around and just casually turn around met instantly with the Von Karma figure still scribbling in his clipboard yes that would be Mr. Sanovo to you Skiff yes sir and I am reluctant to say but I would so like to see you succeed and join our endeavor here yes sir I will do my do better than my best glad to hear he says and kind of casually walks away um... you turn around in time to see Sabrick whisper something to Vivian and Sabrick kind of just clasps an arm around you and says come, come on let's let's go have a walk real quick I be my guest er lead the way sorry and kind of again just casually kind of walking around the room in no particular manner kind of just in circles but not ne technically near anybody okay what's up what is happening I don't understand anything that's going on anymore I'll be straight with you Do you know me? Yes. Okay. I just met you last week. I don't know why, but something I feel something has just happened. I wasn't just here. You've probably got the full story, but something's up. Nothing negative, nothing bad. We're not in any immediate danger. But something's off. Something is very off. And if we can... What's the word? Collab our stories, we might be able to figure something out. from what I can gather whatever's changed it's not life-threatening to anything so there's no immediate rush but I would at least like to figure out what has happened to possibly prevent it if this thing happens again if that is possible At this point, I inform him of that well in the forest. He makes a note of it. That's where it all started. Is there anything here, anything immediately here at the council that is not right? The only thing that has changed that I'm aware of is Vivian now has a scar and our boss is new to me okay well 
new boss. What was the was there an old boss? Yes, his name was Lyle. That gives you a look. It's a stupid name. Well, he was a stupid person, but that's my own personal begrudgence. Okay, then why was he boss? Whatever. Well, he was a very good accountant. An accountant being boss of the adventure skill? Yes, well... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. And I can only assume you're confiding in me because whatever you hold is some truth. Because you have yet to dismiss anything as being completely out there. And well, I can just tell something's not right. I can't explain it any other than that. At this point, I, I just want to pull out the black sheet of paper. Do I still have that on me, or has it disappeared again? You do. You do, in fact, have that on you. I unfold it and say... The you I know handed me this. He takes the piece of paper and looks it over. He quickly fumbles around in his pocket and pulls out a similar piece of paper. This makes things interesting. I only have one of these. Then we have a lot to talk about. He hands you back the piece of paper and kind of pats you on the shoulder as someone is flagging him down from across the room. He says, Don't panic. Don't worry. We'll sort something out. My best suggestion is go with the flow right now. Until we get more time, I'll... One last thing, one last thing before we leave, or I leave. Yes. In this particular wherever I am, where is my house? Do I have one? You, as far as I know, you, I didn't pick you up at a residence of any kind. Um, you... We, we chatted a little bit. You were interested in buying this large building over in Homestead, but I, I, I don't know. Okay. That's all I needed to know. Then I'll. I first of all, I pat myself down, see if I have any gold or anything, anything from this timeline that might help you me identify have myself. You have everything on you that was on you when you. We're at the well. Which wasn't much because I packed light. Dang it. Sabrak gives you a look and says, we'll sort things out. Just be patient. And hurries over to the person waving him down. Okay. You stand alone in the middle of this council building unaware of what exactly has just happened. More mysteries will possibly come up and more questions will arise, but hopefully more, even more questions will be answered. As that will have to conclude Season 3. My brain is mush. Good time to stop. As always, I have been your dungeon master. With me, as always, has been our currently triumphing haphazard heroic, Daniel. Hello, goodbye, pudding. We will have to continue this adventure in Season 4 and see what arises. Thank you all for joining us. We will catch you next time. Bye.